Airy, how much do you know about the detection principle of NDAR, or non-dispersive infrared, absorption sensors? It's the principle typically used by Reek and Keiki when detecting CO2, combustible, and N2O gases, right? My understanding is that, generally speaking, it is the sensor principle widely used in everything from high-precision environmental analyzers to simple commercial gas monitors. That's right. So, today, our lesson is going to focus on why NDR sensors are so versatile and commonly used and what are the features of Re Ken Keiki's NDR sensors. Ari, can you explain the working principle of infrared sensors? Yes, when a detection gas enters the sensor's cell, the infrared radiation emitted by the light source is absorbed by the detection gas, so the amount of infrared radiation arriving at the infrared sensor decreases. The infrared sensor detects the amount decreased and outputs the result as the gas concentration. There is an optical filter placed in front of the infrared sensor, and its role is to allow only the wavelengths of the infrared radiation absorbed by the detection gas to pass through. Consequently, the sensor is not sensitive to gases that absorb wavelengths of infrared radiation, different from those absorbed by the detection gas. You've been studying a lot, haven't you? Also, gas molecules found in the atmosphere's chemical makeup that are made up of two identical atoms, such as N2 nitrogen and O2 oxygen, characteristically don't absorb infrared radiation to being with. By the way, molecules like H2 hydrogen and Cl2 chlorine are also included in the group of gases that don't absorb infrared radiation. Speaking of which, there have been efforts to reduce CO2 emissions to deal with recent environmental issues, and the reason for that is related to CO2's absorption of infrared radiation. The Earth is heated by solar energy, and a portion of that energy is emitted from the Earth's surface as infrared radiation and released back into outer space. That released infrared radiation gets absorbed by greenhouse gases such as CO2 and returns to the ground as heat. The concentration of the CO2 gas on Earth, which was 280 ppm in 1750, at the time of the Industrial Revolution, has spiked by 48% to 415 ppm as of 2021, and it is said that the temperature has risen 0.8 degrees Celsius in the last 100 years. That's why actions to reduce CO2 emissions are being diligently pursued worldwide. So global warming is also happening because of CO2's infrared radiation absorbing properties, huh? It's my first time learning that. Getting back to Re Ken Keiki's NDAR sensors, Ari, do you know about their IRR-0409 and IRR-0433 infrared sensors? Of course I know. They are sensors used in the GX3R Pro for detecting CO2, and I hear that they are the world's smallest class size non-dispersive infrared method sensors. That's right. It took the marvelous technical expertise and tireless determination of the developers behind the scenes to be able to make these IRR sensors super miniaturized. What aspects of them are superior? The internal construction of the sensors has been completely revamped, and the developers managed to shrink the small size of past infrared sensors down to something incredibly tiny. They also succeeded in making them surprisingly lightweight, these sensors weigh less than two 1 yen coins. Amazing. But if they make this small and light, wouldn't there be some limits to their capabilities? Not at all. They can operate in two different measuring ranges while being small, light, and energy efficient. They are also high-capacity sensors that have passed EN performance testing EN45544-2, which are international standards. With world-class technology bundled into the world's smallest size class, I would say that they are two of Reek and Keiki's prized sensors.